unitedintentions.org. Catch us on Facebook and Instagram at United Intentions and Twitter at Higher Intention. Look for us on 99.1 FM, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Stitcher, Blog Talk Radio, and many more. Over the next hour, we'll introduce you to some fascinating people and engaging discussions that may provide you with answers to assist in revolutionizing your own personal health. And now, here's Dr. Nelson. This is the United Intentions Radio Network. I'm Dr. Nelson Bulmash, and you're listening to another edition of Health Matters. For those of you catching the show here in Atlanta on WDJY FM 99.1, welcome and thank you. Know that we greatly appreciate you listening and following us. For those of you who are picking up the program down in Florida on our recently added WWNN 93.5 FM station, we are so happy to have you as well. Welcome and enjoy the show. If you haven't already, go watch our Get Your Life Back Now DVDs for free. Well, sort of. Visit GetYourLifeBackNow.live. Tomorrow, we'll have Kim Corbin from the New World Library at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And don't forget, visit our website at UnitedIntentions.org and connect with like-minded individuals like yourself. We have an amazing guest today. She has uh, been certified as a teacher of the Alexander Technique since 2009. Her undergraduate and graduate degrees are rooted in the behavioral sciences, which has helped her inform her approach to an understanding of human behavior. She has devoted the past 17 years of her life to the study, research, and teachings of the Alexander Technique. Prior to her Alexander Technique certification, she worked as an educator both in the U.S. and abroad, which prompted her to research posture among children. She recently presented a workshop on the benefits of the Alexander Technique at the 49th Annual Association for Applied Psychophysiology and Biofeedback with internationally known biofeedback expert Dr. Eric Pepper. Her newly published article, Eye Posture, A Closer Look at the Lifestyle Practices of School Children, examines the habits that lead to good and poor posture among youth. Her website was chosen in the top 25 posture blogs and websites to follow in 2018. Currently, she teaches the Alexander Technique in Melbourne, Florida. She is a member of both the American Society for the Alexander Technique and the Society of Teachers of the Alexander Technique. For more information, you can visit her website at www.bodyandposture.com. Tammy Bullmash, welcome to Health Matters. It is such a pleasure to have you on the show. Wonderful to be here. Thank you for having me. We're, we both have such busy lives. You're a wonderful both wife, mother, and professional. And I, of course, am, am not as busy so much uh, with my family anymore since my kids are all grown up, but very busy with my radio work and my practice that you and I, unfortunately, yes. don't get the time we need to spend with each other. So I know. So this is how we have to meet now. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> On air. So we'll, we'll have our closest, you know, 100,000 friends listening to yes, us as you yes. and I catch up. How's that? Yes, I think that sounds great. <laughs> So, Tammy, let's jump right in. Tell us what exactly is the Alexander Technique? The Alexander Technique is a clinically proven method used to alleviate back pain and discomfort, as well as improve posture. And the technique helps individuals recognize undesired habits that cause body pain and relearn how to use the body in a more efficient way, which promotes ease and optimal functioning. Wonderful. Tammy, I'm, I'm always fascinated by how people arrive at specific places in their life. Mm -hmm. What was it about the Alexander Technique that enrolled you, that made you so passionate that you've spent over 17 years now both studying and teaching it? Well, the Alexander Technique can be used uh, for performers and it can be used for rehabilitation uh, purposes as well as just promoting uh, posture and health. And in my case, I was uh, studying performance. I was studying theater in London and the Alexander Technique was part of our curriculum there. And I had been given some feedback from some of my teachers that um, I was a little bit awkward on stage, that I was clumsy, uh, that I didn't flow. Right. And uh, I just kind of thought that's how I was and, and there was nothing I could do about it. So I just said, this is just the way that I am. And they thought that the Alexander Technique uh, class would help me. Well, I, because I was so disconnected from my body, I had no clue what 
what to do with my body anyway. And I, I wasn't really getting it. And so the teacher of that class said to me, you know what, Tammy, I think you would benefit from some private Alexander Technique lessons. And that was the one-on-one -on -one work that I did with my wonderful teacher, Manoli Garcia. And uh, I truthfully say that if, if she would have told me to follow her to the moon, I would have followed her to the moon. But uh, it was the Alexander Technique that was um, what she was teaching me. And what I discovered, my aha moment through that process was that I realized that it was something that I was doing to myself that was causing me to look clumsy and awkward. It was due to habits that I had. And the empowering part of that was that I could then relearn how to not do those things. And that made me feel very powerful about my own body, that I had some control over how I was managing it. Wow, that's fascinating. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate <laughs> yes, that. Yes, sure. So why is posture and proper mechanical advantage so important? What kind of things happen if you don't have good posture, if you don't use good biomechanics, and what kind of things can we help prevent if we do use better posture and better biomechanics? Well, posture is just a word um, that, that I like to use because most people know what it is. But the Alexander Technique is so much more than just posture. I right. think a, a better way to look at posture is the manifestation of everything else that we do in our lives. Our thinking habits, uh, the daily habits, the way we carry out activities. So rather than just think of, of posture as a fixed state or something um, that is an isolated um, issue, rather think about what is posture comprised of? So if you have issues with back pain or neck pain or headaches, uh, you certainly can think about what, what ways are you using your body repeatedly that could be therefore showing that symptom of a headache, showing that symptom of a back pain. Right. Interesting. By the way, mm -hmm. Tammy, before mm -hmm. I continue, we should let everybody know that we are not only answering questions on Facebook as they come, but we also have a call-in number. So yes. I don't know if you talk to any of your friends and family members about calling in, but that number, Tammy, is 678-495-4345. Once again, mm -hmm. if you're driving a car, pull over, please. <laughs> don't get yourself in trouble yes. here. That, yes. that, number, that number again is 678-495-4345. Folks, we'd love to have you call in and, and uh, ask Tammy lots of questions. She is fascinating, as you can already tell, <laughs> and uh, we'll enjoy answering your questions. So, Tammy, it sounds like this is far more than, than just a, a, a technique that you have done to you. It sounds like this requires the individual to take ownership and responsibility for the habits that mm -hmm. uh, compel them, if you will, for lack of a better word, to show up, whether it be with regard to posture or performance. I think you were telling me at one time that the gentleman who actually developed this mm -hmm. had lost his voice and was having speaking problems. Uh, yes. He was a Shakespearean performer, as I recall. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and and exactly so, right. so yeah. So, so he actually used this system to help improve his ability to perform. So, yes. does it also help the organs perform better? Meaning, does it cause general a general increase in one's well-being by enhancing not only the structure of of a person's body but also of of organ function? Yes, that's a great question. As you mentioned, F.M. Alexander is the founder of the Alexander Technique, and he was born in 1869, and he was a Shakespearean actor, and he actually developed a form of laryngitis because of the way he was using his body. So what he, his, his um, incredible and genius discovery was that he realized after losing his voice and after going to doctors where no one could figure out what was wrong with him, he realized it was something that he was doing to himself, and he was before every time that he was going to perform, he lifted his shoulders up, pulled his, uh, raised his chest, brought his head back and down. And the way that he was contorting his body and the way that he was uh, constricting uh, his voice and usage caused him to lose his voice. So when applying that to what we do in our modern um, techno savvy world, uh, how does that affect our organs? Well, if we're sitting hunched over in front of our computer screen for the majority of our day or in front of our mobile phone um, or walking with our head down as we're checking our phone, we are certainly putting all that pressure on our organs. And it's very difficult to function, and, and not only on our organs, on our muscles, uh, we are requiring our back to do so much more of the work rather than letting our, our legs and our knees help out. 
carry out these activities. You know, it's it's very interesting, Tammy, as, I, as I'm thinking about what you're saying. Mm -hmm. If one is hunched over, you're, for example, you're not going to breathe in as deeply, as fully, and yes. as a result, you're not going to carry as much oxygen to the cells, which means you're That's not going right. to make as much cellular energy, which means that if you're hunched over incorrectly mm -hmm. as such, mm -hmm. then you're going to fatigue the muscles even more. So you're, yes. you're, you're right. You're going to have this cascade of lower energy and yes. more tension in the body. So it's going to make it also more difficult, I would think, for you to perform, um, for example, if you were a student, if you were studying, or if you're mm -hmm. working all day in, in you know, some position where you're working on a computer, I'm guessing that it, it would really eventually, at the end of the day, take its toll on you. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's the, the daily wear and tear of the habits that we do every single day. You have to think about how much time we spent sitting. Our bodies weren't designed to sit for as many hours as we sit. If you go back to the days of the hunters and gatherers and, and how little sitting they did, they were in activity. And, and today, the majority of our days are spent sitting down. And when we do move around, it's maybe for an hour or two of uh, maybe intensive exercise, which if you go from sedentary position to intensive exercise, of course, you're going to experience back pain as well because you're not giving yeah. any moderation to the body. Right. It makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So, Tammy, tell us what kind of people do you generally work with? And and in, in, in addition to what you work with, what mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I don't know, in other words, if, if you have a specific focus, if if you work mm -hmm. or, or I know you, you love performing, you love mm -hmm. uh, at one mm -hmm. point you were a singer and an actor and you, you, you were beautiful in, 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 in both as a singer and as an actress. Uh, is, is this kind of an area that you focus or do you see a myriad of people who come to see you for any number of different uh, issues? I do see a myriad of people that come. Um, I tend to like working with actors, but not only actors. Actors tend to come to me because they're introduced to the Alexander Technique in their schools. And so um, I do find actors that want to enhance their performance. But I also uh, recently have been seeing more um, medical uh, professionals, healthcare professionals and practitioners coming. And the reason being, you think these are the people that take care of other people. Why would they need... Um, you know, any help with their posture. Well, just imagine a dentist who sure. spends the majority of their time working bent over and looking into the mouths of their patients and what that does to them daily, hour after hour, day after day to their back and their posture and doctors, uh, surgeons, especially. So I do, I do have uh, people from the healthcare uh, profession that come, uh, teachers that spend a lot of time um, on their feet, um, people in the military that, um, that even retired people from the military that are now starting to really feel what all those years of that kind of training um, and the kind of toll it's taken on their bodies. So really a full spectrum of people, teenagers um, who are actually smart enough to say, hey, I noticed that I'm sitting with a rounded back and I don't like it. What can I do about it? Right. And parents who are concerned. So all sorts of people. Fantastic. You know, it's interesting, Tammy, you spoke about doctors and I had a dentist I, who I really, really liked. He was excellent. And he had a football injury of his neck when he was playing football in college. And he ended up having surgery on a disc. Well, as it turned out, he ended up having at least three more surgeries on his wow. neck while practicing as a dentist, and it got so bad from the awkward positions that he had to maintain to look into people's mouths. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, he retired uh, in his 40s. He never even made it to his 50s. Wow. So how unfortunate. I, I wonder if, if the Alexander Technique could have helped him and spare him uh, you know, a lot of years of, of pain and suffering that would have allowed him to continue in his craft for many more years. That's an incredible, incredible story, and um, and it's unfortunate. And I actually was thinking when you were mentioning that there is um, an Alexander Technique teacher named Aniko Ball who lives in Melbourne, Australia, who is actually a dentist, and she was close to retiring around that same age, around in her forties, I think. Uh, or, right. Or I think mid forties. She had just given up. She discovered the Alexander Technique, and uh, now she conducts workshops for other dentists and dental assistants because of also what happens them in dental school. So she is making waves now for people in her field. And there are other um, doctors in the Alexander Technique community that are also reaching out to people in their profession. So certainly um, you have the medical profession and you also have people that their job is lifting things. If you think about people that are working in um, whatever kind of um, 
environment or occupation where they're lifting things all day, moving around heavy things, and they, they have to wear um, those uh, belts. Uh, and you think, are they being mindful in the way that they're carrying out these activities, or are they straining their bodies as they carry out these activities? And, wow. and that mindfulness is really what the Alexander Technique it promotes. It makes a lot of sense. Tammy, we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> Folks, this is Dr. Nelson Bulmash. You're listening to Health Matters. My guest today is Tammy Bulmash, and we're talking about the benefits of the Alexander Technique. We'll be right back. Don't touch that dial. Are you ready to be the hero of your own story? It's time to put the power of your health back into your hands. Join us for our free 25 day journey to get your life back now from chronic illness. Our doctors and experts will guide you back to optimal health. Unfortunately, medicine is now a business. It is not a healing art anymore. Commercialization has taken over medicine, and what happens is safe, inexpensive treatments are often ignored because nobody's making any serious money off of them. There is not a magic pill. My concern is helping people get well as opposed to making money off selling supplements. We're going to address some of the complications of diabetes with the right nutritional supplements. Go to www.getyourlifebacknow.live and begin your journey today. This is Dr. Nelson Bullmesh. We're returning and you're listening to Health Matters. My guest is Tammy Bullmesh. We're speaking today about the benefits of the Alexander Technique. Tammy, you ready to answer yes. a, a phone call? Absolutely. All right. Who am I speaking with? Hello? Hang on one second. We seem to be... I'm not sure. They may have gotten disconnected here, Tammy. Oh. Let's give this just a... Well, Tammy, I'll tell you what. We'll, we'll talk while they figure it out. Do I need to hang okay. this back up again? Okay. Uh, I don't know what happened. They may have hung up. Sorry, Tammy. Somebody else no will call back. I'm not sure what okay. happened there. Uh, all right. So, Tammy, what kind of problems have you specifically helped people with? I'm very, very excited to hear more of that. I know you're very good at what you do. So, uh, well, first let me explain what the Alexander Technique looks like, what a lesson looks like, uh, because so many people come to me for so many different reasons, and um, and I approach every lesson in the same way. So if someone comes in and they say, you know, I really have um, shoulder pain or I have lower back pain, which are the, the two most common reasons really why people come, or if someone's been told, you know, I've got issues with my posture, everyone tells me I have really bad posture. So uh, the things that I discuss with them are let's first think about what the habits are that you are engaging in every day. So there's the um, the obvious habits of sitting in front of a chair, in, in front of a screen in a chair and also uh, whatever the occupation is. Right. And then there are the habits that are um, really more specific to the Alexander Technique um, lens, which are how do you engage in each activity? And it really starts with the chair. So when a new student comes, uh, we, we look at ourselves, we, we do some work in the chair, uh, which is in front of a mirror. And it's often very difficult for people to look at themselves in the mirror without judgment. Uh, but that's not really the focus. The focus is not to like look and examine our bodies. <laughs> right, it's, right. It's, it's to really look at how we're using our body. So if someone is getting in and out of a chair, they think, okay, what's the big deal? I just got in and out of a chair. But really, how do you get in and out of a chair? When you get out of a chair, are you... Tammy, hang moving? on. I'm yeah. Sorry. I think nope. I think the person called back. My apologies for interrupting you. Who am I speaking with? Okay. I for some reason I don't know why, but that's the second accidental hang up we have here. So, I don't know what's going on there, Tammy. Forgive me for interrupting you. No Continue. Problem. You were 
Go right ahead, Tim. Yeah, yeah, just about the lesson. So if a person were um, sitting and in front of a mirror and we were looking at at how they carry out an activity, like getting in and out of a chair. So how do they get out of a chair? They probably just prop themselves up. Sometimes they push their their hands up to help them get out of the chair and they plop right back down into the chair. And it's it's actually, there's not a lot of awareness in that um, getting in and out of the chair. And the Alexander technique, we think of the primary control, which is the relationship of the head, neck, and back. And we say to let the neck be free so that the head can go forward and up and the back can lengthen and widen. So when we get out of a chair, we are moving up and forward with our head. And we are getting out of the chair. We are thinking about keeping our back back and lengthened. And we are using our knees in that activity. And when we get back into the chair, instead of thinking about looking at the chair for support, we actually think about what if we were to go from a standing position all the way to a squat in the floor and the chair just happens to be there at the midway point. Oh, I love so that. We actually, yeah. So we actually use our knees so much more in this mindfulness in the Alexander Technique lesson where so many people, we don't use our knees. I always say knees, please, knees, please, because right. we have so much space in our knees and they want to help. That's their, their job yes, to help. Yes, they do. In. And, and so that's really what we look at. So when someone comes to me and says, I've got, you know, lower back pain or I've got shoulder pain or my elbow hurts or my knee hurts, they say, let's look at the whole organism because that's just a symptom of the underlying issue, which is dysfunction in the use of the body. So this really is a, a technique or a system of care that requires somebody to be quite mindful about the way yes. they manage themselves, for lack of a better word, excuse me as a scientist, but in time and space. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Time and space, awareness, spatial awareness, um, and also sensory awareness, which is actually a very important thing to think about this faulty sense of awareness that most of us have, because so many students come to me and say, I don't have any issues with my posture. I just have, you know, um, neck pain. And so I'll say, (laughs) okay, so I don't have any issue with my posture. Look, I sit up straight and they show me very proudly how they sit up straight. And so that's the faulty sense of awareness or faulty sensory awareness where you think, okay, what I'm doing is sitting up straight, but actually you're arching your back. And so when I bring them into a lengthened position, which is releasing the lower back and thinking up and freeing that neck, they'll look in the mirror and they'll say, that's not straight. I look like I'm rounding my back. And I'm like, no, that's actually, you want to go to neutral, right? You want to go to neutral spine. And so it's going to feel wrong. So that faulty sensory awareness is what we think is right versus what is actually the more desired way to carry out activities. This is absolutely fascinating. So you do a lot of work, it sounds like, with anything related to the neck and spine Talk to me about extremity issues. I'm, I'm sure that by, by freeing up the, the spine that you're going to also enhance extremity issues. Do you directly yeah. uh, teach people techniques for handling extremity issues? I don't focus on extremities per se because I look at the at the functioning of the body uh, as a whole. Okay. It's a more holistic approach, and I look at, uh, for example, someone can come in with wrist pain, and uh, they can say, you know, my wrist hurts a lot, or carpal tunnel, whatever um, their issue is. So I don't I don't look at the hand and say, and first of all, I don't treat. It's not um, the Alexander technique is not a treatment; it's a lesson. Fair enough. So it's it's learning um, tools. Of right. how to uh, how to improve your uh, your overall well being, and so I wouldn't look at that. But what happens? What happens when you lengthen your back? When you free your neck? When you go forward and up? Then the body is getting back into balance, and then you find that these symptoms lessen. Uh, I had a student with uh, sciatic pain, and after lessons, you know, she came in for the sciatic pain. But after um, a few lessons, she's like, it doesn't really hurt anymore. And so I didn't treat the sciatic. I'm not like looking at any particular part, but you look at the system as a whole, the right. lengthening of the body as a whole. Oh, how, how wonderful. So <laughs> what I'm hearing is that your system, the Alexander te- uh, technique, mm-hmm. could be used completely as a standalone method mm-hmm. for teaching people how to improve the effectiveness of their mechanics, their body, their uh, energy production, their organ dynamics? 
Oh, absolutely. It could be standalone, but I also think it can be complementary um, to other forms of uh, modalities and techniques that help people, such as massage, physical therapy, chiropractic care, uh, because you find that people gravitate towards certain forms of care right. and it resonates with them. And sometimes that care um, maybe can't do everything. And so you find another, if, if a person is having immediate pain and they just can't move, and they, you know, they need an adjustment, they need just so that they can physically move, then they would go to a chiropractor sure. or a physical therapist or a massage. And the Alexander technique, while it certainly can help offset the pain, it is a, 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 a process. So it takes, um, there was a study in the British Medical Journal um, that, that uh, looked at the Alexander technique and it found that out of the other methods that were, stu- that were um, tested in that uh, study, I think it was massage and physical therapy. Um, the Alexander technique was proven to be the most effective after 24 lessons, ah. and uh, it solved about over 85 percent of the back, the chronic back pain. So after 24 lessons, so you see, there's the commitment component to the Alexander technique, where it is not a quick fix, and that is something that I want to stress: is that this is not. Um, that's why it's different than a treatment. Whereas in a treatment, you come, the practitioner right. takes care of you, you leave, you feel better. And this is more of a tool. So it's a toolkit and it gives you skills to then apply these principles to yourself. And you certainly do this under the guidance of a teacher, but you apply these uh, skills to yourself and then you can work on yourself to offset all of these uh, bad habits and all of this pain. So that's what I loved about it was that I liked to feel like I was in control of my own recovery and my own improvement. And um, and so again, th- this is not going to be for everybody because some people are like that. Nah, I don't care. I don't want to know. Just fix me. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I know. I know. <laughs> so, it's so, so it's funny. No matter <laughs> no matter Tammy how much I educate people, there are there yes. those people who will invariably walk into my office sheepishly with their head down, yeah. and I say. What's going on there, champ? How come? Uh, how come you're staring at the floor? I hurt myself again. You did. Well, what did you do? Well, nothing really. I um, I just woke up and I couldn't walk. Yeah. And I get these pretty often, you know. And the truth yeah. is, of course, they weren't. They probably weren't fighting a demon while they were uh, sleeping. What probably happened right. is they reached a critical threshold, and they didn't have yeah. you to teach them proper mechanics and such over time. And so, the the body goes to uh, a state of chaos. Meaning, if if you're not yeah. constantly doing things to create coherence in the system, then it tends to fall apart. So, right. oh my goodness, here, didn't know my phone was uh, here and. Here, would somebody please take that? Sorry about that. I had <laughs> I it didn't hear. You didn't hear. I it didn't good. hear anything. No, no, I, no. Uh, good. Yeah. I, I, somebody's probably calling me for the show. I was trying. <laughs> I, was, I was going to give it to Jesse to help record for Facebook Live, so I had an immediate copy afterwards. Uh, you can take it out of the room, guys. So, Tammy, yeah. what what kind of people wouldn't the system help? I mean, it just sounds like it's tremendously versatile and yeah. very applicable for nearly everyone. Right. So it wouldn't be necessary for, let's say, a toddler because toddlers have uh, what we call like perfect use. Everything that they do is the most natural process of using the body. When they get into a squat, they can play in a squat for hours. They That's how they play. And they run freely and they move their head right. with no tension. So I would I would not encourage toddlers um, unless the toddler is born with some kind of issue or problem. I would not advise toddlers coming. Um, and I, I also would advise people who um, have a hard time moving um, to, to just be aware that the Alexander technique, the traditional Alexander technique lesson is table. Uh, we do some table work and chair work. We can also work on the floor if they can't get on a table. But of course, if a person is confined to a wheelchair, we can still work in, in the wheelchair. We can do some certain things. But the full um, traditional Alexander technique lesson is table work and uh, chair work and, and walking around and that sort of thing. So as long as a person is, is comfortable and competent to do so, yeah. there would be yes. no restrictions. So it, it sounds right. to me like this is really quite safe for nearly anyone. Oh, absolutely. Everyone. Yeah. Tammy, I'd, I'd like to, uh, because I'm going to be asked these questions if I don't ask yep. them to you. My, my <laughs> patients tomorrow are going to say, well, how come you didn't ask about this, this and this? <laughs> Tammy, how safe is this for someone who has uh, osteoporosis or osteopenia, meaning loss of, of, of the bony matrix? So they have a fragility yeah. of the skeletal system. It's safe for everybody. It's uh, there's a study right now for people with Parkinson's disease and how it helps stop the degeneration and deterioration. Um, wow. 
which is so it's it's safe for everybody it's it there it's a non-intrusive technique so it's not invasive um i'm not manipulating um not doing anything that could um cause any kind of pain i'm guiding the student i'm having them look at themselves in the mirror as they carry out an activity as they walk around the room so they're in control and um if what they might experience, um, most people, I've, in my experience with my students, most people will say, oh, that feels weird. That feels really weird. Like if I have them stand a certain way. I remember my husband, um, when I first met him, I, and I had to give him an Alexander Technique lesson. Of course you did. And, 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 and that's also why I married him, because he really liked it. Yes, and I just wonderful, thought, wonderful. Okay, yeah, Wasn't a like, deal breaker. Good. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he was into it. He's like, this is really cool. And um but he said to me, he's like, what did you do to me? Oh, my God, I feel so weird. It feels so so wrong. And so, I'm like, this is normal. This is, again, that faulty sensory sure. awareness where, where what you think feels wrong is actually your body coming into alignment through what you're doing to yourself. You know, you're lengthening your back. You're right. freeing your back. Your head is going forward up, and, and you're, you're feeling this way. And then the next day, he's like, I feel great. I'm like, yeah, because, you know, your body is getting back into balance. It's going to take you a while to – to relearn how to use your body the way you did as a child when it was moving around perfectly. Right. Fantastic. Tammy, we're going to take another break. Folks, we'll okay. be right back. This is Dr. Nelson Bullmash. You're listening to Health Matters. My guest is Tammy Bullmash. When we get back, we're going to hear about Tammy's research. Hi there, I'm Dr. Amy Dairies, a general and integrative dentist in Roswell, Georgia, and I'm also a spokesperson for the American Dental Association. You know, as a dentist, I tell my patients that the mouth is the window to one's overall health, just as the eyes are the window to one's soul. After working in general dentistry for the last 25 years, it has become my desire to offer good health resource information to everyone around me, empowering members of the public to become their best, healthiest selves. The Whole Healing Radio Show features practitioners from dentistry, healthcare, and nutrition about the cutting-edge techniques available. Together, my guests and I will show you how to implement lifestyle changes, achieve your personal goals for health, and heal the parts of you that may have been forgotten. When your health is intact, you can go on to manifest your ultimate dreams. Become the best version of yourself. Join me, Dr. Amy Dairies, on The Whole Healing Radio Show to learn how. All right, Tammy, we're back. And yes, Tammy, believe it or not, I have another question for you. Okay. <laughs> what, is the, what is the question? Somebody on Facebook Live wants to ask you a question. Do we have okay. it yet? Well, not yet. Okay. Well, they'll bring it in a second, Tammy. Okay. So, uh, Tammy, let's, let's, let's finish this up here. Okay. So, I'd love if you could just take a second and talk for a moment on the research on Parkinson's. That you, you really got my attention there because, sadly, I am seeing more and more men and women who are coming in with Parkinson's. Do you have any information on the study that you were talking about? Well, Monica Gross is actually in charge. She's an Alexander Technique teacher who um, received funding from the Parkinson's um, Foundation, and she's actually going to be doing a form of a congress in Florida. Um, on the 23rd of, of June. And I, I don't want to speak. I, I feel like she's the expert, so I wouldn't really want to speak um, about what she's doing. But generally speaking about Parkinson's, um, the Alexander Technique just promotes mobility. And ag again, when you're dealing with use and functioning, um, a, a person, you know, look like stuttering or being confined to a wheelchair, when you are retraining the body how to use optimally in the way that we were designed, then the body is going to respond in accordance. Right. So, uh, and that's how it helps with Parkinson's. It's, uh, it's just, it's carried out the way any lesson is carried out. We look at the way we're using our body. And so that's what's so nice about these principles is they're, they're very basic and they can be applied to everyone. And it, you've just seen, you see progress with, with the elderly, you see, uh, progress with people like women that are um, prenatal and, and postnatal people that are uh, after they've given birth and they have uh, pain or if they have pain during their pregnancy. So there are just ways that we all hold our bodies that, that kind of hinders our optimal potential and health. Got it. Wonderful. Great, great answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, somebody by the name of Catherine Flockin uh, mm -hmm. asked me to ask you a question. And okay. unfortunately, as I asked this question, I'm not sure what she does. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Do we know, uh, Catherine? Okay. Oh, here it is. Thank you so much. One of the producers gave me a cell, his help with the actual question. It, said, it reads as follows. Hi, Tammy. I'm an artist. I'm an artist at a theme park in Central Florida, and I sit for the bulk of my shift, making portraits of the guests, their children, and even their pets. Sometimes I find myself correcting my posture in my chair because I catch myself slumping. This slumping creates some lower back pain. Can the Alexander Technique help me maintain good posture throughout the duration of her shift? That's the question. Yes. Thank you, Jesse. I appreciate that. Absolutely. I, I, I so appreciate it because I, I, I had no idea what she was doing. So, so talk to talk yes. to uh, Catherine and specifically Catherine. about this. What what would yes. you say to Catherine? First, hi Catherine, and thank you so much for your question. And absolutely, the Alexander technique can help. You'd be a perfect candidate for the Alexander technique. Um, what I'd like for you to think about uh, when you're sitting is how you're sitting. So, if you're trying to overcorrect by arching, then it's really no different as far as your spine is concerned, whether you're rounding your back or arching. Both put pressure on the spine, undo, undo uh, tension and, and pressure. And um, what I would like for you to think about instead of how to sit is how to think. And the thoughts in some ways are more important than our actions, at least in the beginning. Um, so think about your head as it is sitting on top of your body as if it were a helium balloon. And this helium balloon is flying all the way up to the sky. And your spine is like the string that follows you up. And so rather than thinking straight, think up. And as you do that, as you sit straight and you think about your body and you're releasing your lower back and you're releasing your shoulders and really start to think about every part of your body and say, I'm going to release tension in that part. Think about your wrist. Think about your fingertips. And this is actually an exercise that I like for my students to think about, too. When, when people can't feel tension in their body, when they don't know if they have tension, think about before you go to sleep. Sometimes people have a hard time falling asleep. But if you do this sort of body meditation where you think, okay, now I'm going to release my fingertips. I'm going to release my eyelids. I'm going to release my hips. And we just go to each part of our body and we say, release this tension, release this tension. All of a sudden we feel very relaxed. And you can even do that right now. So if you're sitting for a long period of time, rather than think about, I need to sit up straight, think about, I need to sit up. And what does up mean? And what can I release? And of course, take a walk every 30 minutes if you can in between um, people that come that want to have their pictures taken of themselves or their children or their, pet or their pets and, and really just be more aware of what you're doing with your body. Maybe the way that you're holding um, a pencil or scissors, um, are you holding it tightly? Like think about really when you're doing it, think about the next time you're holding it. How are you holding it? what kind of tension is going on or you could do the same thing i mean we can even look at our phones without coming down to the phone we could eat our meals without coming down to our meals we could bring these things up to us we could maintain eye level we don't have to contort ourselves for the scissors towards the the pencils we can still maintain our length and carry out these activities Beautiful, beautiful answer. Tammy, you, you brought lots of memories back. When I started training in the martial arts when I was very young, I remember very distinctly watching some of the really, really high-level masters. And everything they did, the way they poured tea, was artful. So mm -hmm. they were very, very mindful about yes. the way they walked. They were mindful about the way they mm -hmm. spoke. You know, I remember they would pause and listen carefully to what I was saying so they were sure they heard exactly what I, what I meant to say. And, mm -hmm. and so there was a mindfulness uh, to that. And, and, and I, I remember really being impacted by how fascinating it was that these people lived so consciously about how they were in the world, whether it be the way they walked, the way they sat. They were so beautiful uh, when mm -hmm. they meditated. And then, of course, their sword techniques, the, the motion was as perfect as, as movement could be. So what I'm really, really getting about this, and, and now you've perked me even more. You know, you came last mm -hmm. last year. Unfortunately, your, your your family had to leave. You had to yeah. evacuate Florida, as did my niece. Yeah. And yeah. what prompted this whole conversation about the Alexander Technique and its benefits mm -hmm. is we got into this fascinating, absolutely engaging conversation about the benefits mm -hmm. of all these modalities. And I really had never heard of anything quite like the Alexander Technique, meaning mm -hmm. I'd heard of it, but nobody gave such a beautiful description like you did. And and what it's bringing, yeah, really, you, you've done an outstanding job. And what occurs to me is that I have no longer 
I'm no longer the mindful individual that I once was. I've gotten carried up in life and I've got to hurry here. I've got to hurry there. I don't care about my posture. I've got to finish my notes and then I've got to get out to the next patient. You're yeah, not so, alone. No, You're I, not alone. I, I, I know, but I, I have to really thank you, Tammy. You, oh, you sure. know, one of the things that I love is when I invite a guest onto the show, having the guest provoke thinking, making mm-hmm. me, you know, go back and think about my life and how I can alter my life favorably so I have more energy to help more people or to enjoy life more. So, so mm-hmm. thank you. Your, your, your my insights are, are absolutely wonderful. As are yours. As are yours. I, I love following you and, and what you're doing, all these new, innovative, uh, exciting things. Um, thank you. Definitely, I learn a lot from you, too. Well, the next time and, you and I get together, you're, I, I, I'm going to be tugging on your coattails, so yeah. to speak. Tammy, <laughs> Tammy, teach me, teach me. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Well, hopefully we won't be, you know, evacuating from a hurricane. The no, next time no. We... Yes. We won't need an emergency but, again. Yes. Yes. It's a family reunion, but absolutely. But yes, what you spoke about with the martial arts, I mean, that's exactly um, the point. It actually ties into my research when you're looking at different cultures and different um, lifestyle practices and being in the moment, like yoga in the far East is a way of life. And yes. here in the West, we've kind of adopted it as to an, a form of exercise, but really yes. it's a way of life. And, and that the, if you, if you live that way, if you live in that mindset, then the movements are all going to be fluid. I, I love looking at people from different cultures. Um, I uh, conducted a study in Israel looking at two different populations uh, of school children. And one was a low income group comprised of Russian and Ethiopian immigrants. And the second one was an upper middle class group comprised predominantly of Eastern European Jews. And what I found, what was so beautiful about the Ethiopian and Russian um, immigrants was how beautiful their use was, how easily they went into a squat and how their lifestyle practices looked so differently than the ones from that were already westernized. Right. Uh, less technology usage. I mean, you did see an increase of mobile phone usage, which I'll explain in a second, but more time playing outside. That group spent three hours more a week playing outside and just exercising as they were like, basketball and soccer and running and doing these sorts of things. And they ate better. They ate home cooked meal. There are very few, if any, uh, I think one student or two um, even ate fast food. And in Israel, fast food is more expensive than it would be here in the States because of the kosher laws. So they could, you know, people from a lower income group couldn't afford to eat out. So they were eating, um, they were eating these home cooked meals. So you see this, uh, this different lifestyle practice where right. they're using technology less on, on a whole and they're exercising more and they're eating better. And you see this beautiful result, this beautiful posture, if you will, as a result, whereas you have the group that's more westernized that are spending uh, about four hours more um, a, a, a week using the computer and three and a half hours more using the television and using the tablet and using the phone. And, and you see what that does. And their only form of exercise is more um designated times like organized play so they have karate lessons or they have gymnastics and you don't see this going outside and playing um with their friends because they have so many different activities lined up them. And this is very prevalent among the more affluent communities is you want to get your children in, into all of these different activities. But how physically active are they Are they really in all of these activities as opposed to playing outside? And so the upper middle class group was also um, eating more fast food, eating out more, eating less nutritionally. And um, also they were um, engaging in, um, you know, these excessive technology usage. What I did find, although that the lower income group did spend um, less time overall um, on these devices, I did find an increase in mobile phone usage. So these, the, those participants didn't have access to all four of the electronic devices that I, that I examined, which were the TV, the computer, the tablet, sure. and phone, but they all had the, the mobile phone. That's and so incredible. you have to then yeah, and yeah, you have any, to wonder, any level, social economic level, even the poor have cell yes. phones. Yes, they they had the phones, <laughs> they had access, and because that was the only device that they had in some cases, you found that they were using the phone six hours more on average than the upper middle class group, and so while both groups spent about forty hours a week in sedentary position, and the majority of that time was using technology usage, and an additional. 26 and a half hours a week sitting in school. So just sitting down in school, you found that these children were spending, spending close to 70 hours a A week. week. Yes. So 
while the uh, lower income population was still less at risk, they were both really at risk for poor posture. And so you have to wonder about what is it like, you know, elsewhere in the world? <laughs> what Absolutely. Children- yeah. Can you imagine uh, the United States here? Right. I mean, th- right. Th- think of how, how do you how do you think if, if you did, you and I laughed about this earlier, you know, <laughs> I'm not trying to push you into more research. Tammy, <laughs> right. I, know, I know you're as busy as you could be, but <laughs> any any guesses, any thoughts about how it would pan out if you did a similar study here in the United States? I, I would venture to imagine that I would find much higher rates of obesity here because fast food is accessible to um, – to, to the poor, it's it's cheaper food. So in many cases, people go to fast food just because they want to be able to feed their families, and that's yes, affordable. Sure. And buying fruits and vegetables, I don't know why that should be. You know, that should just be a flat rate. You know, very yes, yes. very low cost, but they're very expensive. It's, and going organic is a different story. And um, and of course, exercise. I mean, children today in schools they get like a twenty minute recess break. So I mean, there's not a whole lot of exercise there unless they're in all these sports. And uh, what technology usage i mean technology is so affordable now and um almost i don't really know of many people that don't have a phone unless they choose not to have a phone so i think that the findings would be um exacerbated i think they would just be much worse i think it would be uh, yeah i'm in agreement with you that that makes a lot of sense how interesting that uh, in israel that the poor were eating better food and that people would pay for lesser quality food that's remarkable to me yeah, yeah. It's it's also, uh, I think, telling of what happens when these cultures, these groups that were more isolated and maintained a lot of their cultural lifestyle habits, which was home-cooked meals, playing outside, because they weren't integrated into sure. this Western culture, they maintained so many of these positive attributes right. that we can learn so much from. Yeah. You know, we can learn from these cultures. They might be poor or lower income, but we have so much to learn from them. Got it. Good point. Tammy, we'll be right back. Once again, you're listening to me, Dr. Nelson Bullmash. The program is Health Matters. And my guest is Tammy Bullmash, who's speaking about the benefits of the Alexander Technique. Are you ready to be the hero of your own story? It's time to put the power of your health back into your hands. Join us for our free 25 day journey to get your life back now from chronic illness. Our doctors and experts will guide you back to optimal health. Okay, the standard of care, three Australian uh, oncologists did a meta-analysis. That's the that's the cream to cream of research. Uh, in, in 2004, and they found that when they analyzed all the research studies published in the English language in Australia and in the United States, that when you take stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four cancer, combine them, that the average survival for five years is 60%. And when you add chemotherapy to that, you improve it to 62%. Okay. So a 2% increase in survival rate over five years for $300,000 of expense, all the pain and anguish and suffering that you go through with chemotherapy. Great, great return on investment, don't you think? Go to www.getyourlifebacknow.live and begin your journey today. Folks, I'm back. Dr. Nelson Bullmash here. I'm talking to my guest, Tammy Bullmash, who's speaking about the benefits of the Alexander Technique. The show is Health Matters. For those of you who are listening, please, we would enjoy some questions. So if you're on Facebook Live, send them our way. And if you're in a position to call us, if you're driving, please pull over and be safe. The number is 678-495-4345. Tammy, let's talk about. I, I, I'm a little sad here because I'm having so much fun with you. I, I, I wish know. we could at least at least do another hour here. It's gone by I so know. fast. I, I can't even believe it. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I promised you it would. Do you remember? <laughs> yes, yes. Tammy, let's. One of the things that I always, after the fact, I get a lot of questions over is 
Nelson, you know, why don't you spend a little bit more time talking about specifics? So uh, could you speak to maybe some tips or techniques, Tammy, that would help someone eliminate difficulties, whether it be uh, pain uh, or decreased energy output from poor posture if you're typing all day? Uh, or even, you know, one of the things we haven't touched on is I'd love to hear some of your thoughts about improving performance as an athlete. Do, for example, mm -hmm. do you have any strategies using the Alexander Technique if you're a runner? Are there mm -hmm. any, any suggestions you have for improving one's ability to run with less pain and suffering? Yes, absolutely. There actually there um, are teachers that um, have specialized with um, athlete, Alexander Technique teachers that specialize in um, with with runners particularly and I've talked about the Alexander technique with runners um, I apply the principles of the Alexander technique in the same way for everyone um, someone who is a runner who is an Alexander technique teacher would would probably uh, be able to relate more to athletes um, than I would because <laughs> I'm not an athlete but right. I still would apply the same principles and the first thing I would say to any of my students that is suffering from any kind of pain is to do what is called semi-supine to lie in semi-supine uh, for about 20 minutes a day and semi-supine is a position where you're lying flat on your back and you are, could lie on the on the floor on a mat on the floor or a towel or on your carpet and you put um, about an inch or two maybe depending on on um, how comfortable you are with um, that um, that width under your head for support. So a, a good way to gauge how much um, how thick the book would be would be to stand against a wall and see how far the space is between your head and the wall when your back is completely against the wall. And children, if you'll notice, their head goes straight against the, the wall. They sure. don't even have a, a gap there. Right. And uh, and to lie down with your um, knees elevated. So your feet are, are flat, um, planted into the floor, and the knees are um, elevated or bent, facing up. And it's, it's similar to the same position as you might see people at the beach when they're, lying, uh, when they're laying out. And lay like that for 20 minutes. And as you're doing that, you're decompressing your body. You're just decompressing and, and relaxing and really allowing your body to not be... Um, tense because when we're sitting, we're not only fighting with gravity to maintain being upright, we're also fighting with all of our habits. Right. But when you're lying down, uh, then then you get this this really wonderful release. So that's a great way. If you do that 20 minutes a day, especially after injury, it's going to make a, a huge uh, difference. So, so Tammy, and, if, if I may, in other words, yeah. it, it, so if you're doing this, this could help improve your your posture, your mechanics, your performance, mm -hmm. whether you're in a static, more static situation, meaning typing at a desk, or if you're actually running, right? Mm -hmm. Because the, the same Absolutely. principles apply, right? Am, yes. I, am I hearing you correctly? Yes, it's the same. It's the same because it's really the way we use our body. The activity is just another name to call how we use our body. It's yes. whether you're running or whether, I mean, if you're still carrying out your, your tension in the same way, if you're going to the startle position where, you know, and, and just think of it this way as this analogy, you know, if you have a cat that is um, looking at a mouse, right? And animals and small children are really good models of good posture. So this cat sees a mouse and it pounces on it. It sees it, right. it gets excited and it pounces. Then it goes back to a resting state. Nothing happened. It sees it another hour or two later pounces and then comes back now we while we don't pounce you know like towards mouse a uh, mice or a mouse um we get the same startle pattern we get that same way over sure. little things you know we oh my god i have to cook dinner oh my god i have to go to the store oh, i'm gonna be late for work <laughs> so we're, we're just doing this tension all the time so it's going to disrupt our our functioning now runners and you if if you are holding tension in your body as you run then you're going to experience more pain of course there's there's injury if someone falls but the wear and tear on the body is a result of use it's a result of how you're using your body Really, really, really good point. Uh, you know, you're bringing so many incredible points. I, I, I want to have a follow-up so I can speak intelligently <laughs> to the, the, the number of people that are going to quiz me when I get back to work tomorrow and uh, over the next weeks. Mm -hmm. This is so fascinating. So w one of the things that comes to mind, Tammy, is is that we really have not been taught how, I mean, you're, you have a method here with the Alexander Technique, but, but what other systems other than maybe meditation are you mm -hmm. taught how to alleviate the stress that we, we trap probably every day yeah. into our bodies? 
Right. I, I absolutely agree with you. And this is one of the things that I um, try to stress with my students and in my blogs is this notion of body education. Why aren't we body educated? Why are we only told about our body when we're a newborn or a baby, when someone points out to our cute little toes or cute little fingers and we're taught how to walk in kindergarten and, and think about personal space? And what happens? When, when does it just become something that we're supposed to know? I mean, s- some of my students get really embarrassed because they're like, I can't believe I didn't know how to do that. I'm like, but who taught you? Who taught you how to think about your feet? Who right, taught you? Right. Nobody teaches you to do that. And, and I, I wish that this would be an integral part of education in school, not just health education and, and, and disease, but like prevention. Like, let's think about our bodies, like holistically. How are we using? How are you holding your pencil? Are you gripping your pencil? Are you holding? What are you doing with your shoulders? You know, How are you sitting in your chair? All of these things are things to think about body use. And and that's what I love about the Alexander technique is that it's so much more than just posture. Posture, of course, is a huge part because it's the reflection of how we use our bodies. But it's so much about the the habits that accrue and and form posture. What what a great point. Uh, Do you so you you have groups uh, you meet uh, as members of the Alexander Technique. Do you talk about bringing this into the educational oh, yeah. process? Because oh, you're right. This is yeah. this is absolutely invaluable. I mean, you're, you're going to laugh at this. It's it's the truth. I don't know where I picked this up, but when I, if you ever look at my penmanship, and of course my family makes jokes about it, you're a doctor, dad, you can get away with it. But <laughs> my friends used to say, for God's sakes, Nelson, are you slaying that pencil? The, the, the sound of the tension of your pencil against the paper is, is unnerving when I sit next to you. You know, I'd get here like this yes. and I'd be all ag- yeah. uh, aggressive and, and then my hand would cramp. You know, when I was done with school, I could hardly use my hand. And it, it was simply nobody ever said, hey, Nelson, why don't you lighten up on that pencil? So, yeah, you're not alone. You are not alone. And um, I see that in children, which makes me sad. And what what I also when I see someone with beautiful handwriting, I'm always intrigued by them. And I want to just kind of uh, my sister happens to have beautiful handwriting. And I look at her and I'm like, how are we related? Because I'm like my dad. I write like like chicken scratch. I mean, just came in and here it's like I'm like, how did we come from like the same parents? Because she it's like calligraphy. I mean, she just writes so beautifully. And and I'm just intrigued by people that that take the time to really develop or, or have developed these muscles because it's like there's so much to be said like you said about space and time right. about handwriting I mean I think that for people that just want to get it down but they have these ideas and they just want to get it down and they write it really quickly because that's more important that's important to people like you and I because it's like we've got a lot that we want yes, to say we've got yes. to get it down and then there are other people that just are really in that moment really taking their time and it's kind of like art and they're utilizing all of these wonderful muscles as they're doing that and it, it's a habit that's stays with them. So even when things get rushed, when they, like my sister has got kids and she's, you know, busy, but she, she still, she sent us a card recently for my daughter's birthday. And I was just like, you're not going to throw it away, right? Yeah, no, I, I'm not. I, I, I know, I, I know. <laughs> my, my daughter, Ariel and my brother are the same way. I mean, when, and when they communicate, it's like, no, I can't throw this away. This is art. Which, which sister? Yeah. Which sister are you referring to? Sarit. 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 Uh, Mika, Mika has good handwriting too, but um, Sarit was the one that I haven't seen. I haven't paid attention to Mika's handwriting in a while. But Sarit, I mean, I was just like, what? And she's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're saying that. I thought it was just scribbled, and I'm like, what? Yeah, I, 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 right, like, right. Are you kidding? So. This is scribble. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got, I've got, trust me, I've got things that I'm still like, I'm an Alexander Deck Deep teacher. I need to write better than this. But, you know, some dab- habits are. <laughs> yeah, die longer. hard. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So so when you're with me, you can you can help me set up, you know, for maybe the next 60 sessions that I can practice <laughs> lightening up on I my pair of pencil. Yeah. No, I think, I think you'd surprise yourself. I think if you really took the time and looked at it, is I think you'd really surprise you. I know I do. I know when I really take my time and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's how long it takes to do that. Right. It takes, you know, it takes effort and, and and conscious awareness to you I got know. it I got it oh so gosh we're we're winding now we got two minutes it's time for final thoughts Tammy what are your yes. final thoughts about today and today's interview anything in particular you want to share with our listening and viewing audience I just want to first thank you so much, Nelson, for having me on your show. And um, you're very, very dear to me. And I'm just so happy that we are uh, related and that this is in our family, yes. this uh, this health consciousness and awareness. I think that that's wonderful. And, um, and what I'd really like to, my final thoughts are, if you are a person who um, wants to change 
is, is looking for change to feel better about yourself, then, then don't think that you can't. If the Alexander Technique is something that you might be interested in, then read about it and um, educate yourself about what it is and 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 find a teacher and I can um, provide that information um, for you that you can go to a website called www.alexandertechnique.com for information about um, the Alexander Technique and ways that it might be able to help you and also there's another um, there's another um, organization called the American Society for Alexander Technique Teachers and that's AMSAT A M S A T online dot org and so that's another um, place to find teachers and to really just think about if you are willing to make that uh, commitment for yourself and and to really improve your quality of life wonderful thank you so much tammy i hope you'll stay on the line for just a second yes uh, i'll complete our interview today by thanking you tammy it was such a pleasure and i want thank everybody you. to know i will be back we will be live at five in two weeks that's june 26th two weeks from today thank you all signing out we'll catch you again for another edition of health matters Thank you for joining us on this edition of Health Matters with Dr. Nelson Bulmash, where we help you discover how to ignite your mind, body, and spirit.